star half plane, either above or below that line. Well, let's go ahead and let's graph this thing. First, a couple questions. Is this linear? Is that linear? Mm -hmm. And yeah, be before you really answer that, maybe you don't know how you determine whether something's linear or not. Does it have two variables? Mm -hmm. Good. Are each of those variables raised to, at most, the first power? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, that's linear. All right, that, that's what tells you this is going to be a linear graph here. If we had x squared, it would be linear. Y squared, it wouldn't be linear. But we have an x, we have a y, they're all both to the first power. That's going to be a linear uh, graph for us. Is it an equation or an inequality? Inequality. Definitely. It doesn't have the equal sign. That means we're not an equation here. We're an inequality. That means our solutions are going to be a half plane. <coughs> well, let's look at how to graph this. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to do a little cheating. We all like to cheat, right? I mean, come on. Everyone likes to cheat. No, I'm just kidding. No one likes to cheat. But we're going to do a, we're going to do a little bit of cheating up here. Uh, we're, we see we really don't know how to graph this thing like it is, right? Because we've never graphed inequalities. But we have graphed equations before. So here's a little cheating. Now, I have a lot of students who always, always make this mistake. They say, well, if you do it to this inequality, you do it to all inequalities, right? Well, I'm going to do something up here, but this is only in this context, and we're only doing it temporarily. What we're going to do temporarily, we're going to replace this inequality with an equal sign, just temporarily. Do we do this all the time? No. No. Just when you're graphing a linear inequality, okay? This is it. It's the only time you ever do this. Are you going to do it with absolute value inequalities? No. no. Please don't do that. No. No. We don't want to do that. We want to just do it for right here, just so we can graph the line. All right? That's the only time we are ever going to do this. We're going to cheat just a little teeny bit for this one context. Now, your head if you're with me. You ever going to do it anywhere else besides this? No. Don't want to do that. So step one, we're going to replace the inequality with an equal sign just temporarily for one little step. <clears throat> Okay, so let's give that a try. So we're going to have, instead of x minus y is greater than 3, let's do x minus y is equal to 3. This is our step number 1. Here is why we do this. Here is why we do this. You see, the reason why we use that equal sign just temporarily is because we know this thing is going to be a straight line. We also know that the solutions are going to be either above or below, so we'll have to deal with that in a little while. We're not going to deal with that right now. All we want to do right now is get the straight line on the paper. Are you with me? That's, what we, that's our goal. But there's really no way to find out our intercepts if you have an inequality. The only way you find out intercepts is if you have something equal to it. That's why we're doing this step, just so we can get the line on the paper. Okay? <clears throat> so we're going to use this step to do the next thing right here. This is under step number one. And we're going to find the x and y intercepts. So we're going to replace inequality with equal sign temporarily, and then we're going to find x and y intercepts. Okay, how in the world do you do that? This is one way that you can use standard form to graph the equation of a line very, very quickly. If you've never seen this before, this is going to be kind of neat for you. It's not slope-intercept. We don't even have to worry about slope-intercept. You could do slope-intercept here, couldn't you? You could just add, or well, actually subtract y and subtract 3, 
or subtract x and divide by negative 1, you could get slope intercept out of this. That, that, it'd work out exactly the same. If you want to do that, that's fine. What I'm giving you is another tool. Okay, There's another tool in your little toolbox here that you can use, and it's pretty quick. You ready for it? Here's what you can do to find your intercepts if you have standard form. To find the x-intercept, underline x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I want you to think about this before I write anything up on the board here. Here is my x-y-axis. Of course, this is x and this is y. x is our horizontal, y is our vertical, for sure. If I want to find the x-intercept here, look at the, look at the board here with me. If I want to find out where this crosses the x-axis, can you tell me what is the y-coordinate, what is the y-coordinate of every point on here? For instance, this point would be like 1 comma what? 1, 0. 1 comma, not 1. 1, 1 would be right here. This is 1 comma? 0. This is like 2 comma what? 0. And this is negative 3 comma what? 0. What's the y-coordinate of every point on the x-axis? 0. So if I want to find out where this crosses the x-axis, I'm going to plug in y equals? 0. Let's plug in y equals 0. Watch what that does for us as far as the standard form. Check it up, check it on board. If I plug in y equals 0, this is going to be x minus 0, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, look what I do. If I plug in y equals 0, if I just cover that up with my hand and rewrite the rest, if I cover up with my hand, that means it's 0, right? Mm -hmm. It's gone. Just write the rest. If I cover y with my hand, I get x equals 3. Let's write that. You've just found your x-intercept. That's kind of neat, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. So what we're doing here is uh, the covering up. Um, we're not tricking the problem at all. That's, this is not a trick. What you're doing is you're substituting in y equals 0. You can watch and see that this happens every time with your standard form. We do x minus 0 equals 3. What's x minus 0? It's just x. 3 is just 3. It didn't do anything for us. We just completely eliminated out the y. So on this problem, we say to find x intercept set y equals 0, essentially we're going to cover up y with our hand and we're going to rewrite the rest. Notice what variable is left when I cover up the y. What variable is left? X. And we're looking for the x intercept, right? Mm -hmm. That's the intercept. Whenever you have that variable equals a number, that's the intercept that you're talking about. Even with constant lines, when we had like y equals 2, that was our intercept, wasn't it? It was a horizontal at 2. Here we have our x intercept. x is 3, we're going to go over to 3 and put a point just a bit. So what we're doing here to find our x-intercept, we're setting y equals 0. Essentially, we're going to cover y and write the rest. Well, that's great. We have the x-intercept. Let's work on now the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, so this was our x-intercept. To find the y-intercept, think about the y-axis. We want to now find out where our lines are going to cross the y. Can you tell me what's the x coordinate, the x coordinate for every point on this axis? This is what comma zero and what comma one and what comma two and three. what comma negative three? Three. Three? Oh. Every point is this is this is zero one, zero two. This is zero three, zero. This is zero something. Zero comma something. So every single value along this for x coordinate is 0. It's 0, 1, and 0, 2, and 0, negative 3. Are you with me on this, folks? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do exactly the opposite thing that we did up here. To find the y-intercept, we're just going to set x equal to 0. Let's try that, okay? 
if we set x equal to 0, what are we going to have up here? Set equal x equal to 0. And read off what you have. Negative y plus 3. Good. Oh, we still have a negative y. Do you guys see the negative y? So if I cover up the x, what I'm doing by covering that up is I'm saying x is now 0. And that means I'm going to be on the y-axis. So if x is 0, I cover that up. I can't do this. Can't do that. What, what's the mistake there if I do this? Mm -hmm. It's the negative. Yeah, that, that's still there, right? I didn't eliminate this, this minus, or in this case, when it becomes 0, a negative. It's going to be negative y equals 3. Negative y. Am I looking for negative y equals 3? No. So, Say it again. Sure, yeah, if I have negative y equals 3, I want to get positive y. Let's divide that by negative 1. I'm going to get y equals negative 3. That's my y-intercept. By the way, I know it took us about 10 minutes to kind of go through this, but can you see that this is very, very quick? Mm -hmm. You do this, you go, oh, let's see. I write equals. I go, what's my x-intercept? Make sure there's only an x left. If you want the x-intercept, you have only an x left. x is 3. Great, x-intercept. If I want my y-intercept, let's do that. Maybe do one extra step besides that, divide by negative 1. y should be the only thing left. y is negative 3. Perfect. That's pretty easy to find those intercepts. Once we have our intercepts, by the way, are there any questions on, on how to do that? So our goal right now is temporarily set equal to zero. I'm sorry, set it equal, not zero. Uh, then set these each to equal to zero. Y for x intercept, x for y intercept. Essentially, what that is is you're just covering up the y, or you're covering up the x, and you're rewriting uh, your equation. After we've done that, we have our intercepts. There is another step. We're going to graph our line. But there are some rules on how to do that. Hey, do you remember when, uh, when we did the interval notation and we did the, actually more, more than this, the piecewise function. Remember those piecewise functions? And sometimes we had the open circle and sometimes we had the closed circle. Do you, remember, do you guys remember that? When did you use the closed circle? When it was equal to or when it was not equal to? Equal to. And the open circle was when it was not equal to. Are you with me on this? We have the same basic idea for our lines. Here's how it works though. We don't just have a whole bunch of circles. What we have is either a dotted line or we have a solid line. The solid line, what do you think that's going to be? The equals or the not equals? That's equals. The solid line is like the solid circle, like the closed circle, okay? So if you're talking about the equals, you're going to be using a solid line. With me? If you don't have the equals up there, we're going to be using a dotted line. That's like the open circle. So if it was like closed circle, solid line. Open circle, dotted line. Those things kind of go hand in hand there. So we're going to graph our line, but with, uh, with two rules up here. If we have a less than or a greater than with no equals, we're going to be using a dotted line. Or a dashed line. That's what I use. Dotted line for less than or greater than, and a solid line for the equals. 